Welcome back to chapter 10. This is our first example with energy ideas, extremely similar to our chapter 7 problem type, but now there's one extra type of energy that we need to be thinking about. So there are a couple of setup problems in the lecture video itself, but this is one of the two full example problem videos that we're going to go through for this type. So just like in chapter 7, what we want to do is identify for ourselves what we mean by before and what we mean by after, because we're still going to go through that same setup table that helped us out so much back in chapter 7. So we have before and after, and we've got the table that we can make. It had a lot of terms that we were thinking about um, back in chapter 7, and now there's just one more term that we are also considering. So the first term is the regular kinetic energy. This is are we moving question, and it's just a simple yes or no. At the beginning of the problem, we are told that we're moving because we start with this 2 meters per second. So the answer is yes, 1 half mv initial squared. And after in the problem, we know that we're moving because we're being asked to find that final velocity. So we have 1 half mv final squared. Then we have the potential energy from gravity. The potential energy from gravity simply asks us, are we higher at that point in the problem than in other points? At the beginning of the problem, we're at the top of the hill. This height, by the way, we know we need to make it into meters, 0.3 meters. But before is a yes, we are higher at the beginning, and after is a no, we're at the bottom of that hill, so it's a no. We were always asking ourselves, did we have a spring? In this case, we do not, but we will definitely be seeing problems in this category that have yes answers, so we just want to make sure we remind ourselves that we are asking for them. And now we have this new term, which is the kinetic energy of ro uh, rotation. So we ask ourselves, are we rotating? So we ask ourselves, are we rotating? At the beginning of the problem, yes, we are we have an initial angular velocity. So 1 half i times omega initial squared. This is extremely important that we recognize that that is the term. A lot of students just throw the moment of inertia term in here, and that is just one part of this overall equation, 1 half i omega squared. We ask ourselves, are we rotating at the end of the problem? We definitely are. We never stop rolling. And so the answer here is yes, so we have 1 half i omega final squared. Then after all of those uh, before and after questions, we also need to ask ourselves, is there a work term? What we are looking for here is a separate push or pull or friction or air resistance force that we are told about or asking for, and none of that shows up. So the answer here is no. So when we look at our standard setup here, energy before plus work added equals energy after, this should be looking very, very similar to chapter 7, energy after. Then we simply plug in all of the terms that we asked about and answered in the before we have 1 half mv initial squared plus mgh plus 0 plus 1 half i omega naught squared plus we said no to work added so we say plus 0 just to remind ourselves that we looked for it and then we add up all of these terms here on the right so we have 1 half mv final squared plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 half i omega final squared. All right, so we can plug in everything that we have so that we can then discuss what the special tricks are that happen here in chapter 10. 
that otherwise this is just a chapter seven problem. All right, so one half, our mass here is two kilograms. The initial velocity we're told is two meters per second. That gets squared. So MGH is two times 9.8 times 0 0.3, and then plus one half. So the I value here is for a ball. Right away, we can stop and recognize that the moment of inertia is going to be for a ball, and we can look that up, and that's going to be 2 fifths mr squared. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the numbers that we have. The mass is 2. The radius, 10 centimeters, that's 0 0.1 meters. We square that. 0 0.008 kilograms times meters squared. All right, so let's plug that plug that back where we have it. 0 0.008, and then we do know what omega initial squared is, but I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. All right, on the right side we have one half times two times our unknown v final squared plus one half times 0 0.008. Eight, the same moment of inertia, times omega final squared. All right, now the moment of inertia was one of the chapter 10 tricks. The other chapter 10 sticking point that we want to make sure we recognize is that r times omega is equal to v. And this isn't even chapter 10. This is a chapter 6 idea. So in the before side of things, the initial angular velocity is the initial velocity, 2 meters per second, over the radius, 0 0.1. And in the after situation, the omega final is not a separate unknown. It is simply v final over 0 0.1. So let's return to what we have and plug in everything that we have not yet done so. So on the left side we have 4 plus 5.88 plus 0 0.004 and now in parentheses 2 over 0 0.1 is our initial, velocity, uh, initial angular velocity and that's going to be squared. And on the right side, 1 half times 2 is just 1, so we have v final squared. And then we have 0 0.004 times v final over 0 0.1 squared. All right, I'm going to scroll the page down so that we have more space to continue this problem. Remember, you can always rewind the video to go back to the top part if we need it. All right, so on the left side, all of this can now go into our calculator as one single final number. We get 11.48 on the left side. That is the total amount of energy at the start of the problem. And on the right side, we have V final squared and then 0 0.004 divided by the 0 0.1 squared is 0.4, and then we have v final squared. So one of these plus 0.4 of these, that's 1.4 total of the v final squareds. So we're going to have to divide both sides by 1.4. So we'll divide by 1.4. And then we will take the square root also. That way we're left with just v final all by itself. That's our final number answer. We get 2.86 meters per second. So we did expect to be faster at the bottom of the hill. So that's our step six check that it's bigger number than two meters per second. And the reason why it's not an even higher number is because a lot of that energy went into spinning the ball, rotating it faster. And so that 
extra energy that we have to incorporate in that second term means that not as much is going into moving it forward as we might have thought from a chapter seven idea. So when we look back at this problem, and I've scrolled some of the setup off the top, but when we look back at this problem, what we should recognize is that the only two extra steps involved were thinking about the moment of inertia, because that is something we have not had to do before chapter 10, and then reminding ourselves from chapter 6 that the angular velocity omega and the forward velocity v are directly related to each other, and so they are not a whole bunch of separate unknowns that we um, couldn't deal with, which it looked like right here at this step until we reminded ourselves of that. So we will have one more problem that shows energy in a full example worked out, but otherwise, because this is only building one extra question into our already um, full understanding from chapter seven, if you feel like you're struggling with these problem types, it may be because you need more practice from chapter seven and those videos are still available. So I'm happy to work with you in office hours, but keep in mind that all of what we're doing in chapter 10 is really building on existing ideas with just a couple of these new overall new ideas like moment of inertia that we're then applying into these um, particular problem types. So I will see you in the next two examples.